Chapter 5. Spitting Image. There's a place I go inside my head sometimes. It's cool and dim in there, and you float like a cloud. No, you are a cloud. The kind you see and keep changing shape, except you can't really see it changing. It just sort of happens. And suddenly you realize the cloud that looks like a big hand with fat fingers now looks like a catcher's mitt or a big soft TV set, like that. Anyhow, I went there right after the fair Gwen ran off with that look on her face. Like, he, what was he doing with my poor little boy? Stealing him away in the wagon? What I do is lie on the floor under my bed where you can just barely see the bed springs and stuff because it's so dark. And before long, I'm somewhere else, sort of floating. And it's so cool and empty here, you don't have to think about anything else. You're nothing. You're nobody. Nothing matters. You're not even there. Time out. Except this time, I can't stay as long as I'd like because Graham is knocking on the door going, Maxwell, Max, are you there? Please answer me, dear. It's important. Yeah, right. But I wedge out from under the bed. There's getting to be less and less room under there. And I dust myself off and open the door. There's no lock, but Graham has this thing about waiting until I say come in. She makes a big deal about not intruding. Maxwell, she says, and she takes a little step inside the room, and you can tell she'd rather not be here. She makes this face because the place is dark and messy, and it probably smells like my socks or whatever. Max, dear, I'm sorry to bother you. You know I never come into the basement, but I just got a call from Gwen Avery, and I think it's important. Uh-oh, I'm thinking. Now the fair Gwen is calling up my Graham, probably to give a report. Probably to report a great hulking beast that lives in the cellar, and I close up inside, waiting for the worst. She called to say how sorry she was, Grandma's saying. Huh? I guess she came to pick up her little boy. Is that right? You and Kevin were making friends? Making friends. What a wet idea that is. But Graham gets her feelings hurt pretty easy, so I don't actually say that. What I say is, yeah, I, I guess so. Graham is uneasy. I can see her eyes flitting nervously around the room, like she's crossing the border into really foreign country. This is a good place, as good a place as any to mention that even though Graham is my grandmother, she doesn't look like a granny. She looks more like a mother because she was, as she always says, a mere child myself when my real mom, mother was born. Well, um, I get the impression poor Gwen wasn't expecting to see you looking so big, and now she thinks she's offended you. Does that make any sense? I guess so. You know her, huh? Oh my, yes, says Graham. Gwen was a good friend of your mother's. They were both pregnant at the same time. Then later on, you and little Kevin went to the same daycare. Did you know that? I give a shrug because I don't really like Graham to know how much I remember about way back then. Graham is saying, she said, she especially wanted me to tell you this, Max. She said she's delighted that you and Kevin are going to be friends. That's the word she used, delighted. And she's inviting you to supper. First thing, without thinking, I say, do I have to? Graham reaches out, and she puts her hand on my shoulder, real light and feathery. You can feel how nervous she is to, just to touch me, and how it makes her uncomfortable to have to look up at me, because, did I mention, I'm a lot bigger than Graham. Bigger than Grim, too. Bigger than most people, it's true. Graham says, she feels bad about how she treated you, Maxwell, dear, and she wants to make it up to you. You don't have to go, but it would be the right thing to do. It was no big deal, I say. She just ran away is all. I guess I scared her. It wasn't you, Graham said. No? Then who was it scared her? Now she's got her tongue stuck, and you can see her swallowing in her throat, like her mouth is dry. I'll just leave that to Gwen, she says. She's quite a remarkable young woman, you know, raising that poor boy all on her own. He's not a poor boy, I say. You should hear him talk. I think the rest of him is so small because his brain is so big. Yes, Graham says Graham. Well... Well, Grim is always saying that. Well, well, like it means something, which I guess it does to her. Anyway, I agree to have supper with Freak and his mom, even though the idea of it makes me feel tensed up, like there's a hand inside my stomach, and the hand is, you know, making a fist. It turns out not to be so bad. The fair Gwen, right away, she's beaming at me, bouncing around the kitchen, talking a mile a minute, so fast the words kind of smoosh together. So did Susan, excuse me, your grandmother mention that your mom and I were pals that is... Until she got married, excuse me, I never could abide in that man. I always thought he was crazy and scary. Is it okay with you? You won't be offended. It's like the de this delay while I sort it out. And then I go, yeah, Graham told me. And the stuff about her knowing my father and thinking he was sick in the head. I decided no comment is the way to go. 
You were the cutest little baby, Gwen says. I remember it like it was yesterday. All of uh, We were all of us living over in the tenants, tenements in those days because the rent was so cheap and we were all just starting out. Freak is on the floor, digging through packing boxes for pots and pans and stuff. He's almost inside a box. All you can see is his funny little rear end sticking out. You'd think he was maybe two years old. That's how small he is until you notice his, where his leg braces make a lump in his pants. From inside the box, he goes, Hey, Gwen, leave the guy alone, huh? You're going spastic. Am I? Gwen says. She's <clears throat> at the counter, going through drawers and looking for spoons or whatever. Sorry, Max. That is... I'm sorry we got off on the wrong foot. It's just, you know, Freak pops his head out of the box. He's got this wicked know-it-all grin. What she means is you're the spitting image of your old man. Gwen says, Kevin, please. Her voice is really small, like she's embarrassed. Yeah, I say, everybody says that. They do? I shrug. Is it really such a big deal for a boy to look like his father? Which is a typical butthead thinking, because of course it's a big deal. If your father happens to be in prison, which everybody in town knows about. It's not like there's any secret about what he did or why he's there, except everybody acts like it should be a secret, and the bigger I grow, the more I look like my old man, the worse it gets. You really knew him, I say. I mean, him and my mom when they were together. Not very well, Gwen says. She's looking for a nice to sli slice open a pack of hot dogs. I never saw much of your mom after they got married. He made it difficult for your mother to have any friends. There's a knife on the table, and I pick it up and hand it to the fair Gwen. She doesn't flinch away, and I decide she's okay. She's really pretty cool. So, Freak is saying, when do we eat? My fuel cells are depleted. Supper is great. The fair Gwen makes this really tasty potato salad with spices and stuff, way better than the mushy stuff Graham makes. And we have hot dogs fried in a pan with the buns toasted up butter crisp, just the way I like. And two kinds of relish, and three kinds of mustard, and red onions cut up real small. We sit out in the backyard eating from paper plates, and Freak tells robot stories that are so strange and funny, I'm laughing like a maniac, and then I'm choking, and Freak is pounding me on the back. Expel the object, Freak shouts. Regurgitate, you big moron! And he gives me another thump, and I cough up this yucky mess, but I'm still laughing so hard my nose is running. What a goon. Except... Really, it really is funny. Me trying to sneeze a hot dog through my nose, and we're both laughing like total morons. This is great, Gwen says, looking at Freak and me. I'm so glad we decided to move back, you know? I feel like we're all getting a fresh start. It's time to go home. Graham gets nervous if I'm not back before dark. Everything seems really great, just like Gwen says, except when I lie down on my bed, it hits me. Boom. And I'm crying like a baby. And the really weird thing is, I'm happy.